Let us paint a picture for you. The storm has hit Chicago with relentless force, and rainwater is surging through the streets, threatening to flood homes and overwhelm sewers. But deep beneath the bustling city streets lies a hidden megastructure designed to stop these floods in their tracks. We're talking about TARP, the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, or the Deep Tunnel Project. It's a 110-mile underground labyrinth built to battle storms, protect drinking water, and even combat climate change. In today's video, we descend into the depths to uncover Chicago's massive underground fortress and see how this engineering marvel could be a blueprint for cities worldwide. However, there is a slight possibility that the project's massive success might be too good to be true. Stay tuned to find out why. If you've ever flown into Chicago's Midway Airport, you might have noticed massive, water-filled reservoirs just outside your window. But these aren't just ordinary ponds. They're former rock quarries transformed into critical parts of the city's ambitious deep tunnel project. Launched in the 1970s, the Tunnel and Reservoir Plan, or TARP, is a multi-billion dollar feat designed to prevent flooding and keep raw sewage out of Lake Michigan. And while it won't be fully finished until 2029, this $4 billion underground labyrinth is already changing how Chicago deals with storms and protects its drinking water. To understand why TARP is necessary, we need to take a trip back in time. Chicago was built on marshy land, and its low-lying terrain has historically struggled with water management. With a temperate, wet climate, and increasing urban development, rainstorms often overwhelmed the city's sewage systems, leading to dire public health risks and even a cholera outbreak. In the 19th century, city planners realized they had to find a way to divert sewage away from Lake Michigan, the primary source of drinking water. So from 1864 to 1867, the city constructed a two-mile tunnel to draw water from further out in the lake away from pollution. However, the city needed another solution, and this one was truly ambitious. They engineered the Chicago River to flow backward. By constructing a series of locks and a 45-kilometer canal, they directed the river's flow into the Mississippi River instead of Lake Michigan. To this day, the Chicago River runs backward. These early engineering feats laid the groundwork for future improvements, but by the 1960s, it was clear that Chicago needed something much larger to tackle ongoing flooding issues. And that's where the Deep Tunnel Project comes in. TARP consists of a series of large tunnels and reservoirs designed to capture excess stormwater and sewage that overwhelm the city's primary sewer system during heavy rains. However, as effective as the Deep Tunnel Project has been in reducing flooding and pollution, there's been a notable shift towards more natural stormwater management solutions, like green infrastructure, which is why Chicago is now incorporating features such as bioswales and native plantings to help absorb and filter rainwater, reducing the strain on the sewer system. Spanning over 110 miles and reaching depths of 150 to 300 feet below Chicago streets, the Deep Tunnel Project has grown into a massive underground labyrinth with tunnels up to 33 feet in diameter. Building this extensive network wasn't easy in such a dense urban landscape, so engineers got creative. They transformed former rock quarries into the Thornton and McCook Reservoirs, turning them into colossal holding areas for stormwater and wastewater. The Deep Tunnel Project has been a game-changer for Chicago, drastically cutting down on flooding and pollution by capturing and treating billions of gallons of stormwater. Its success has inspired global projects like London's Thames Tideway Tunnel and Singapore's Stamford Diversion Canal, setting a benchmark for urban stormwater management. Now, let's talk about the current status of TARP. Phase 1 of this monumental project involved the construction of 109.4 miles of drainage tunnels, ranging from 9 to 33 feet in diameter and buried deep underground, up to 350 feet. This phase was adopted back in 1972, began construction in 1975, and finally became operational in 2006. That's over three decades of hard work. We're currently in Phase 2, which focuses on building reservoirs primarily designed for flood control. This phase is still underway, with an expected completion date of 2029. The TARP system includes several major reservoirs, like the Gloria Alito Majewski Reservoir, located in Elk Grove Village, which has a capacity of 350 million gallons and was completed in 1998. Then there's the Thornton Composite Reservoir, which can hold up to 7.9 billion gallons and was completed in 2015, helping to further alleviate flooding issues. And the McCook Reservoir, which started with a capacity of 3.5 billion gallons, completed its first phase in 2017 and is set to expand to an impressive 10 billion gallons by 2029. When fully completed, TARP will boast a total storage capacity of 17.5 billion gallons. These massive reservoirs act as holding tanks for untreated stormwater until treatment plants can catch up. That treated water then gets released into the Calumet and Des Plaines rivers. It's like having a safety net for the city's waterways. Now let's discuss the real-world effects of TARP. Before the system came online, severe weather often forced water management agencies to dump excess wastewater into Lake Michigan and the Chicago River to prevent flooding. 
but as more of the deep tunnel system has become operational, those incidents have decreased significantly. In fact, the Chicago River, once considered an open sewer, now supports over 60 fish species and has seen increased wildlife along its shores. The riverfront is undergoing substantial development, and for the first time in years, canoeing is back on the agenda, though swimming is still off limits due to lingering pollution levels. But it hasn't been all smooth sailing. Back in 1986, an intense thunderstorm drenched the southern part of the deep tunnel area, causing geysers to erupt as the system struggled to redistribute the water. Thankfully, after that incident, watertight bulkheads were installed to prevent such events from happening again. Since TARP has been operational, combined sewer overflows have been reduced from an average of 100 days per year to just 50. And with the Thornton Reservoir in action, those overflows have nearly been eliminated altogether. That's a significant win for both the environment and the residents of Chicago. But critics argue that the deep tunnel isn't equipped to handle storms intensified by climate change. Environmental advocates are raising the alarm, urging the city to incorporate more green infrastructure solutions. It's clear that the deep tunnel is a groundbreaking achievement, but Chicago must adapt and evolve its approach to water management as climate challenges grow. So what's next for Chicago? The city is now focusing on green infrastructure. Think rain gardens, permeable pavement, and green roofs to absorb rainwater before it even reaches the sewer system. Let's look at how exactly they built these massive structures. First up, we have the tunnels. These tunnels form four massive systems, the mainstream, Des Plaines, Calumet, and Upper Des Plaines, each designed to intercept stormwater and sewage overflow before it can flood streets or pollute rivers. Then we have the reservoirs. Building them has been no easy feat. These reservoirs are carved out with explosives and reinforced to hold billions of gallons of stormwater. The scale and complexity of TARP require close collaboration with local quarries, construction crews, and various stakeholders to make each reservoir a functional, reliable part of Chicago's flood defense system. The TARP Deep Tunnel is no ordinary project. At 33 feet in diameter and with a reinforced concrete liner 12 feet thick, it's one of the largest civil engineering undertakings on the planet. Local construction union workers take pride in their contributions to this monumental project. To bore through layers of solid limestone, they used a massive 22-foot diameter mining bore, an engineering marvel in its own right. Now, let's see how the water treatment facilities, run by the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, actually work. First up is primary treatment. Here, screens catch debris and heavy solids sink to the bottom, while fats and grease float to the top. Next, we have secondary treatment, where microorganisms work their magic. These tiny organisms thrive in aeration tanks, munching on the remaining organic matter in the water. They clump together and settle out, leaving behind cleaner water that can then flow out into the river or go through even more filtration in the tertiary process. Finally, in tertiary treatment, the water gets a final cleanse, removing ammonia and bacteria to ensure it's safe for the environment. The entire process can take less than 12 hours, and by the end, the reclaimed water is often cleaner than the original river water. Chicago's wastewater treatment process is one of the most environmentally friendly in the world. They only have to lift the water once, which saves a ton of energy compared to other cities where facilities are scattered around. But why is TARP stirring up so much controversy? Most people in the Chicago area might say something like, TARP? Oh, that's the big project under the ground to fix the Chicago River. But while TARP is one of the most ambitious public works in the U.S. history, its price tag keeps climbing and skepticism is brewing. Originally projected to cost around $2 billion, the latest estimates now suggest TARP could exceed $11 billion. That's a huge number for taxpayers to swallow. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is footing 75% of the bill, while the remaining 25% falls on the Metropolitan Sanitary District of Greater Chicago. Once complete, TARP promises to create a second Chicago River beneath the surface, vastly improving the water quality for both residents and wildlife. But not everyone is on board. Critics argue that the project is too costly and may not even achieve its goals. Some environmentalists question whether it's truly necessary, suggesting that the river might not need to be fishable or swimmable at all. Many residents are of the view that why should the city pour billions into a project when they're not even sure it's needed. Despite the controversy, TARP has strong supporters, including city officials who insist that it's essential for the future of Chicago's waterway systems. But with the budget ballooning and the timeline stretching into decades, one has to wonder, will TARP deliver the clean water Chicagoans deserve? or is it destined to be another unfinished dream? As we look forward to the completion of the reservoirs in 2029, the entire system will be capable of holding over 17 billion gallons of water. Chicago is already reaping the benefits, but what happens when the system reaches capacity? Throughout its history, Chicago has tackled one engineering challenge after another. The tunnel and reservoir plan is just one example of how cities can adapt to a changing climate. With innovative thinking and bold actions, Chicago is paving the way for a sustainable future one that many urban areas can learn from as we combat the impacts of climate change together. 
So what do you think? Is TARP the blueprint for other cities facing similar challenges? Or are there better alternatives? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for more.